Welcome to Visiting with Mia, and I'm so excited today to talk to one of my good friends and favorite colleagues, Representative Joel Kretz from the 7th Legislative District. You know, while we've partnered up on the Right to Repair Bill a couple times now, really I think today the focus is also about our, our relationship and our friendship and how people that come from such different parts of the state still find ways to work together. And I think the Right to Repair Bill is just an, an example of that. And I know today we'll talk a little bit about the bill and why it's important to you and, and maybe a little bit about our relationship and why it's important to you also. Sure. Well, I, I think you're right. I think um, that's the approach that the public expects and, and I think we're seeing less and less of it, whether it's on a state level, particularly a national level. Mm -hmm. um, everything is getting so divided and, and broken, frankly. And um, that's why I value our friendship that, uh, you know, we, we probably don't agree on a whole lot of things. But, uh, <laughs> At least on the voting board. <laughs> well, yeah, and but when we find something that we have a, a mutual interest in, we can work together, and I think that's mm -hmm. really how things happen here. I'll never forget the, the way we actually became, you know, partners in working together. You had asked to have a bill really think about the historic look back, and I've never forgotten that, and just realizing that we all care about what's happened in history and where we're at now and as we legislate, why it's so important that we're creating a path for making sure that we learn from our past and we do something better. Yeah, well, hopefully we learn from the mistakes <laughs> of the past. Right to Repair Bill this year mm -hmm. has um, like three different components to it and mostly probably the agriculture equipment is the most meaningful, but also, right, you use electronic devices and appliances sure. and um, wheelchairs. We have wheelchair users in every district of the state. Um, why do you think that this policy is so important? Well, you're right. From my perspective, uh, I am so far out in the country, so isolated, mm -hmm. that uh, in a lot of cases, you know, if it's not something that's pretty pretty valuable, you you get rid of it mm -hmm. uh, because trying to get something repaired in a rural area is really difficult. And uh, agricultural equipment is is uh, right down those lines. They. Uh, I had a, a code showing on my John Deere tractor here recently and uh, talked to the dealer and uh, they didn't have a field guy anymore, you know, so there's nobody to come out. So my choice is to take a, you know, 10 ton machine, 80 miles uh, to get looked at, you know. Um, so I, I think it's even more glaring maybe just because the distances in the rural parts of the state, uh, it's not an easy fix for anything. and. Uh, you know, in this situation, I had a neighbor that had worked for John Deere for 14 years, knew what he was doing, but he didn't have access to the electronics to just simply check out what was wrong with it. So uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, they've worked with the American Farm Bureau and worked out a lot of the problems there, but, you know, the same concepts apply to anything that we're talking about. Uh, I think there needs to be an independent ability to repair things. Yeah, and I agree with you, and I think you know, while we see um, legislation like this being entertained all over the country, sometimes it's just the pressure of us having these conversations more publicly. Having a public hearing helps to bring forward people's issues and make sure that, you know, our constituents are being heard when there are issues. So I really think that this is a product of where, um, you know, the community tells us their needs and we legislate for them and we see where it goes. And it doesn't always mean legislation to the governor's desk every year. We clearly know hundreds and hundreds of bills don't get to the governor's desk every year, but relationships like this are part of what makes government better. I, I do agree with you that I think um, whether you pass a bill, uh, you know, you've kind of had some pressure on this issue for a number of years now. And, uh, you know, whether, you know, it wouldn't it be nice to all the problems be obsolete, you know, mm -hmm. when we get to the end of the road. So a lot of times, uh, you know, whether it passes or not, it's the pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think that had a big part of um, the interaction, like on the agriculture things with American Farm Bureau and the manufacturers. And now they're all jumping on board. And it sounds like they've solved uh, most of the problems. Well, we'll see, right? And that's yeah, we'll the see. benefit of us coming back together every year right. to, to check in on that and ask those questions. Yep. You know, I was talking to Marsha, who testified the other day as a wheelchair user, mm -hmm. and she was telling me how important it is because she had a friend who was a quadriplegic, and um, their chairs are customized. Right. And because they had to wait so long for a part, um, her friend had to have a loner chair. And during that time, um, she developed a pressure point or a right. soft spot, right. and she ended up passing away because that spot got infected. And so again, this is where it's important. It's not a partisan issue, it's a people issue. And um, just being willing to come together, I think, on this, I hope that other people will see is that 
this is what we do in this Washington. Not all the time, yeah. sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really thankful for this time together. I'm thankful for our relationship, the ability to come to you at any time and look at that policy and see how, how does it look for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes her a better piece of legislation. Well, that, that's what I appreciate you always ask and, and you're interested in, in that exact question. Now, how does it work in your part of the state or for the people you represent? And, and uh, you know, when I think of the agriculture things, there's the same risks. You know, there's a risk of life and death. Uh, for me, the big one right now, it's 24 below zero over there. And if the tractor doesn't run, there's animals can die. So, and I hold them in higher esteem than most people. Your horses are beautiful. I did get Thank to, you. I yeah. get to see them. You did. I yeah. did. Yeah. 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 yeah I appreciate you making a trip over. Yeah. You know, um, it, uh, it just shows, you know, I, I think we have a lot of the same values, but it's a whole different world. It and is. I appreciate you coming. And I appreciate your your open door and feeding us sure. and really making that experience. And now it's your turn to come to South King County. I've got to do that. Yep, yep. yep. we'll do that. Yep. Well, thanks again for visiting. Thank you, appreciate <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Yep.